border. Identify them, register them. And luckily for us, most of them coming from the northern borders of Nigeria. We are bordered by Francophone countries where documentation and the rule of law is very, very strong. Once we say any pastoralist coming into Nigeria needs to be captured at the border, documented and identified. And for us to do so, we need to appreciate the economic value of their movement. For instance, now you fly out of Abuja or Lagos or any international airport in Nigeria, you are, you are, you are requested to declare currency over $10,000. At current rates, $10,000 is just 10, 10 cows. So if we do that at the airports, we should do that at the borders as well. We capture them, know that this is Mr. So 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 coming in with so so heads of cattle from this location, where are his nationality papers from the country he's coming in. Then we give him some sort of paper and an identity. In fact, we can even capture their biometrics. All you need to do is at the border post, a laptop with an internet connectivity, which most places it's available now. You capture them, you give him a piece of paper that he can carry wherever he is. And then Mr. XYZ has 100 cattle. You are taking 100, you are taking of how much? You are taking of $80,000. That way also we can track them. But I think it's very important for us to understand that it is criminality and then those arrested because of this criminality should face the full wrath of the law. Hajj, on Hajj matters, I would like to quickly answer distinguished Senator Tomala Ali Wakil. From what I know, and I'm sure a number of distinguished senators here will agree with me. During the last eight years, since the establishment of the National Hajj Commission, Hajj management in Nigeria has improved tremendously. We still have challenges, uh, but coming specifically to the issue of the tragedy in Mecca, yes, that's the word, tragedy. It was something that was not, not envisaged, and it's something that we pray never happens again. The Saudi authority, authorities have already established a committee. Nigerian Hajj Commission, I'm aware, have made their own inputs. I'm very sure, based on what I know of the Saudis and how they take Hajj very important, they will ensure that whatever went wrong will be addressed in subsequent years. Uh, to, to the question regarding uh, my papers of J.P. Morgan, uh, it's an error, really, it shouldn't have been attached, and I apologize for that. Uh, bailout strategy for the states. Actually, what I, from my understanding, the states were not bailed out as such. It was basically a refinancing of the loans that they took from the banks. What ordinarily they should have paid within two years or three years had been stretched to maybe five years or, or some even more to make it easier on their cash flow. Uh, I, I, so I think uh, basically any person in distress can meet his bank and also accept very liberal terms. And I think the, the move by the president is a move done in the right direction. Because I know a state that ordinarily would have paid 900 million every month on debt service, now in that state is paying about 100 million. So that extra 800 million obviously will go to other very important uh, financial requirements of the state. On other issues regarding banking and so on, I think the consolidation done by Solodo was a policy that needed to be done at that time. Uh, and I think the banks, obviously, their balance sheets, uh, you know, so basically, I was, Mr. President, if you don't mind, I will stop here at this point. Thank you, sir. My name is Senator Mao Ohuabungwa, younger brother to my beloved brother, Mazi Sam Ohuabungwa, who happens to be a good uh, friend of the Senate President. 
But I want to tell the president that when they go to economic circle, they should talk about some. But here is Mao. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Nomini, I want to congratulate you. Because I know you come from a home of technocrats. And I also know that you are one man that has always excelled in your functions. And I want to conjecture that maybe you'll be sent to the Ministry of Industry. And as somebody who was the chairman of the foam manufacturers, and also you ran one successfully, what will you say that is militating against industrial growth in this country, especially in the area of manufacturing? And again, as a minister, whether in industry, investment or not, but as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you agree with me that today, the ailing textile industry especially is an issue in this country today and the automobile industries. Prior to this time, you know that we have so many automobile industries, we have so many textile industries, but today they are, they are more important. What would be, what will you propose to the President and the Executive Council? And if by the grace of God you become the Minister of Industries yourself, what will be your plans to ensure that we get these industries back to stream? Because we talk about unemployment, when the industries are not working, how can there be employment? But I believe that if these industries are working effectively, definitely there will be employment. So if you're, by the grace of God, I know that this Senate will clear you and you become, tell me what you will do in those areas. Thank you very much. Mr. President, the distinguished college, Mr. Nomini, my name is Francis Ali Mikera, representing the good people of Edo North. My question to you is simple. As a banker, there are a lot of deductions from the banks that they are deducting from their customers. You have back charges, you have VAT. Of recent, the bank came up with a policy that when you collect money more than 500,000, if you are having a current account, they will deduct money from you. Now, this money they deduct, what are they using it for? <laughs> As a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which you will be uh, very soon, what will be your recommendation to the president? As regards to this deduction, especially when you, when you collect money which belongs to you, and the bank is still charging you. What are they using the money for? What would be your recommendation to the president as regards to this TSA, as it relates to this money deduction from the banks? Thanks. Thank you very much, my president, my distinguished colleagues. I am Kabiru Ibrahim Gaya from Kano South representing all the people of Kano South. Mr. Nomini Mohammed Musa, I appreciate your answers on the movement of the Fulanis and how they could be settled. You know, I am a Fulani man, and I know Fulanis are good surveyors, and that's why they can move from Adamawa to, Pota, to Calabar without any compass of bearings. They always know their way. But my question really is one or two. You remember, we are very much aware that the oil price has seriously dropped and is dropping. I remember in those years before our independence, other cash crops were the major source of, of revenue by the government. So Nigeria was an export promoter of cotton, groundnut, cocoa, palm oil, and etc. Now we are importers. 
how can we reverse the trend if you are most likely appointed as Minister of Agriculture or a Minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, how would you advise the, 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 the Presidency on the way forward to revive our lost glory? Thank you. It's not on your seat. No, meaning you didn't take those questions. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, First of all, uh, Mr. President, I would like to answer 